Hi, YouTubers. I wanted to get back in the, um, talk about the last lesson that we talked about. About expanded awareness and fulfillment of desires. I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs, starting from where I left off. Okay, it says, <clears throat> You may at times have felt stifled or restricted in achieving your goals. You may have felt that you were alone in the world, or that somehow you were different, and that you just weren't like the others and didn't fit in. We have found, as we progress on the path of learning, growth, and self-awareness, that the walls that keep us isolated come down, and we learn to communicate effectively, finding an affinity, a closeness, a friendship with others that we never before knew existed. You will find your capacity to create friendship increase as you build an inner strength and security that comes from the different effort to be the dynamic and self-aware individual who is your true self. Sometimes you may find parts of your life tiring, boring, repetitious, or unfulfilling. There is one thing, however, that you will never become tired of, and that is the fulfillment, excitement, joy, and happiness that comes from learning, growth, and self-development. With these qualities, you become successful in all aspects of your life, the spiritual life, mental life, emotional life, and the physical life. There's so much you can accomplish during your lifetime. You may only have imagined one-tenth of the possibility of your accomplishments. You can be very successful. You have an important mission this lifetime. It is our duty to teach you and to aid you in understanding your unique purpose so that you will accomplish your inner and outer objectives, and to be a benefit to yourself and humanity. This will come from your efforts in knowing yourself and sharing this with others. So, this, when I, you know, went to this metaphysics during it, uh, the 80s, late 80s, I didn't know too much about uh, vision boards, dream boards, and, you know, just setting your goals. But in 1970, I'd say 74, maybe, yeah, no, 72, maybe, I used to work at the telephone company, and uh, the night shift, it would be very boring and you just waiting on somebody to call in. But I would write during that time and I write what I wanted. I, I always wanted to have an upholstery shop. It sounds strange. In, in 1970, in this early 70s, I wanted an upholstery shop. And I didn't even know how to do upholstery. But my mother piddled with furniture and I would help her. But I, I just... I would just write and I would, you know, uh, design how I wanted the workflow to go and just, you know, pipe dreams. And when I went to the school of metaphysics, they taught us about vision boards and, you know, stuff to, what do you want? So I started doing this and I just can't tell you how this happened, but I would do furniture for friends, because I could, I could always sew. That wasn't no big deal. I could sew. But, and when I look back on the work that I did back then, it was some tacky looking stuff. But, you know, we didn't know no better. So they would pay me, and I, you know, I'm an upholsterer. I can do it. I can do it. But I, I didn't really learn 
until I applied for some of these jobs in these shops. And it was a place, uh, a big furniture company that made furniture for Sears. And I said, oh, I'm going to apply there. And they had all the women. The women would be on a different section. They would sew cushions and stuff cushions, but no women on the floor doing upholstery. And I told them, I want to be a upholstery. I can do it. I can do it. So they put me out there on the floor with all these men. And honey, if I say they did, they wore me out. I was a young girl, young woman, and and I would slow up the line. They would get paid by how many sofas they would put on the floor. So I slowed up the line, and and a certain amount of sofas had to be done, wrapped up, and getting ready to go on the truck. And they would some of the guys would come and help me at the end and and to speed it up. But I remember one old white man, and he, he spit tobacco, but he, he had a cup. He didn't spit it on the floor. Country old guy. And when you're closing up the back of your sofa, you know, the, the actual back, you have a mallet in your hand to hit, to hit it. And you got to hit it real hard because it's got nails in the back of it. And he said, Gam, let me tell you, you can't be tapping that son of a bitch. He spit. He said, "You spit, and you you knock you knock that summer bitch and close that sofa. Up. We ain't got time. You slowing us up." And boy, I tell you, I learned and I learned and I cried and I learned some more. And I mean, I was in the trenches with the guys, and that's how I learned. But in having your desires, what you want to do. There's a sacrifice that you have to pay in order to make this thing come into fruition. You have to do it. So I did, and I did, and I did. And I, I would always put up a sign post. It's going to be my upholstery shop, my this. And, my, I, I, and when I start, especially when I start making money, like, wow, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm it. I'm doing it. No, but I still had a long way to go. But. The business finally became a business. I mean, it was like, how did this happen? I mean, I ended up being the only, yeah, the only black woman that worked in downtown Dallas. There were other black women, you know, that worked in the black neighborhoods, but I was in with the big boys. I did work for the Dallas Cowboys, the Mavericks, and met, did work for Moose, Daryl Johnson, Tony Casillas, and the mayor, and uh, the news people, uh, the weatherman. I was doing work for him, and it was just amazing how the business grew. Okay, that was on the list, to have my own business. And another thing was on the list, I wanted to write a book. But I couldn't think of nothing I wanted to write about, but I always wrote. I would write stories and just, you know, uh, fiction stories. I love writing, and I would write a lot of stories. But I wanted to write something serious. And, baby, when I, <laughs> when I went, sometimes you have to go through something to be able to tell it. But when I went through my um, a battle with my drug addiction and come out, that Victoria story, and I said, I need to try to put this on paper. And I ended up writing this book. And it, the stories just started coming and flowing. So that opened up the, the skills for writing. And I've, I've written several books and things. It's like, wow. And things you didn't know were on the inside of you. When you speak it, when you write it, I, I tell you the power of the pen is amazing. Writing, when you write it, it's like, wow. You can speak it, and but writing makes it never be forgotten. It's, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, like, prophetic words because you wrote it so write your desires down and 
however silly and, and preposterous it may be to other people, write them down. Oh my God, I'm having a hot flash that. Ooh, we. But write it down. And that's what this is about. Writing it down. And it's a good thing to cultivate and groom yourself when the age is there. You, you're I'll say from your 20s on until your 50s. But it's, I'm not saying that after 50 you can't have dreams. But you have to make your dreams be fulfilled a different way because you can't just get out in the trenches and do hard work. I could do some things with my voice maybe um, talking but the physical work I can't do anymore. But you people that are young and have the energy and your health and strength, I mean you got, I mean it's just amazing and, and I, my nieces and nephews man I can't encourage them enough. And even my sons, I mean, they know what what it takes to make it because they were in the trenches with me. And my children tell everybody that I'm a, a slave driver. He, my son said, Mama, in a, another lifetime, you are an old white man because the way you drive people. And I said, well, I might drive them, but we get the job done, don't we? So... But when you're young, you can do this, and you can have these desires, and, and, oh, you can do so much. So don't ever, don't ever sit, uh, I don't know, sit and wait on things to happen. You just, Sometimes you have to get up and go. I'm reminded, oh, I just sweat. I'm reminded so much about... You know, different stories in the Bible when it comes to getting things done. And, and you know, the Bible is uh, stories, um, I'm going to say lies, but it's motivational stories. And that was a story in the Bible about two men that were lepers. And they, they had cast them out of the camp because they didn't want them around them. But... They, the, these sick men were sitting at, at the edge of the village, but the village was being sieged by the enemy. And so the two sick men say to themselves, they said, well, we know it's no food within the city and they won't let us come in. So we might as well walk into the enemy's camp. The worst they could do is kill us. Or give us some food. And the other sick man say, Yeah, we don't have nothing to lose. So they decided to walk into the camp of the enemy. And lo and behold, when they get into the camp of the enemy, somehow something happened. And the enemy could hear the sounds of horses. And, and they just knew that the Israelites had banded together with another nation and they were being attacked. So this whole army just fled, left, just whatever. I don't know if they had horses or whatever, but they all left their camp. And here come these dying men come in this camp and have all the food and everything. Like, what in the world happened? But they were able to get food and then they go back to the uh, the Hebrew, the Israelite camp, and told them, the enemy is gone. We have plenty of food. And so they were able to save the day for everybody. But the moral of that story is, when you don't have anything to lose, go and get what you want. That's what they did. They went into the camp. The enemy's camp and got what they wanted. So that's what I encourage everybody to do, young or old. You go get what you want. And even if you can't think of what you want, write it down. And it's not a rush, but it is a rush. Write it down. And when you write it, it becomes real. 
the pen is always and mightier than the sword. I I want to uh, I'll make another video because I want to do uh, the oracle cards, but I don't want to make a long video. When I close this one, you know, we're going to always do the book of answers. And I don't have any questions, so. <laughs> what kind of questions y'all want to know? Got a question? Uh, the book of answers. Okay, here we go. Um. It says, I hope you can see that. I'll read it out loud. It may already be a done deal. It may already be a done deal. So whatever you're wanting, it may already be a done deal. I'm going to come back with uh, the, uh, the animal card oracle. Because I feel like it's time for me to do an oracle on myself. I'll be right back. Bye.